In this coding exercise, we actually have two requirements that we need to fulfill. We need to update the string class, and inside of this, we have a couple of requirements. First, we have to be able to take a string and then count the number of words. And this may seem like a pretty simple thing to do, but as you'll see, there are some edge cases that we need to take care of. The next thing that we have to do is we have to generate a method that returns a hash that counts the total occurrences of each word in the string. So here, for example, we have a string and it has some punctuation marks, kind of like what you'd have with a dash or a bullet point or something like that. And it says the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy fox. Now here, that means that we should have nine words counted. And that makes sense because if we start here and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that part makes sense. The next thing we have to do is we have to count the total occurrences of each word. So the V is used twice, quick, brown are both used once, fox is used twice, and the rest are each used one time. So let's tackle this one at a time, and let's actually, before we even get to updating the string class, let's kind of talk about what we need to do right here. So you might think we'd be able to do something as easy as this. If I take the string and let's copy it just for using it for some test cases. So we have a string right here. Now, if I do something like this, so if I do string split, this is going to run and right here, as you can see, this splits up the sentence into words based on spaces. So a very naive approach to solving this would be doing something like string.split.count, but you'll see something if we run this, this is counting 11 occurrences of words. So it's trying to count 11 words, but as you can see from our test, we're expecting that only nine words would be counted. And the reason for this is because we don't wanna count dashes like words, but the string split would just, it doesn't really care about what a word is. All it's doing is it's going and it's looking and every time it hits a space, it creates a new element in the array. So if you have punctuation that's sitting by itself, surrounded by spaces, then you're going to have some edge cases where the counting isn't accurate. So a better way of doing this instead would be to utilize regular expressions. And with regular expressions, we have a method called scan, and scan can take in a regular expression of w plus and then what this is going to do is it's going to find all of the occurrences of words. So if I run this, you'll see that this outputs very, very similar content to what we saw with string split, except it skips over the dashes because by default, the by passing in the W there, the regular expression is going to look for common occurrences of words and it's gonna skip over punctuation that's just laying there by itself. So right here, all we have to do is say string scan and then pass in count. So I'm gonna cut this, come up here and paste this in. And because we're using monkey patching right here, so, and remember monkey patching is when we're actually updating the string class, then we don't take in an argument because by default, whatever we call inside of this method, so inside of any method inside the string class is simply going to run and can be called on a string itself. So here I can add count, and this is the same as in previous versions of Ruby, you had to call self dot and then it would run, but now in uh, more modern versions of Ruby, you don't have to do that. So let's test this out. We have now a method called total words. And if I run this, 
you can see that this gives us our accurate count. So now we have nine total words, which is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to hit clear and we can count that part of the exercise as being complete. Now the next one is a little bit more complicated. So with this one, we are taking in a string, but we need to be able to convert this string to be able to count the words inside of it. So it, obviously because we have a hash that it returns, I think it's simply logical that we're going to have to create a hash. So I think that'll be our very first step. So I'm gonna create a hash called list and then I'm going to say hash new and say that this should be a hash with zero elements. And if you're wondering what this equates to, we can run it right here. So if I say hash new with zero, and if I run this, you can see that this just gives us a empty hash, but it does initialize the hash. So if you don't put a zero in there, you will get an error message. Okay, so we have our empty hash called list. Now the first thing we need to do is, now that we have a data structure that we can pass all of this into, is now we can go in and we can start working with the actual counting process. Now this is gonna be very similar to what we did in total words, except for we're going to be actually passing our items into our hash. First, we're gonna call down case, because if we don't call down case, and what's gonna happen is if we, in our one test case, nothing's going to be wrong, but imagine that we had something like this, where we had the quick brown fox, then if we didn't call down case, then it's gonna treat both of these differently because it's going to look for these that have the same exact case. So by running down case, that's gonna make the search case insensitive. Now I'm gonna pass in scan, and this is gonna be the exact same search. So right here, we're looking for words once again. So it's gonna be W plus, so it's going to return words in an array. It's going to return a down case set of the words. And one of the cool things about scan is scan also can take a block, which means that we can pass in items and have them processed as they're being scanned. So what we can do here is we can say W short for word and then say list W. So all this is going to be doing is it's going to go through the collection and then it's going to say, okay, in our hash, I want you to grab the word, which is the key. So here, every time we're going through, we're just like you can see here on line 27, in the first time it goes through, it's going to have an array. It's going to be the quick brown fox jumped over and lazy. And it's go it's going to go through it and it's going to say, okay, the first word is the. So it's going to create a new hash element and with a key of the. So that's the first part. And the next thing that it's going to do is it is going to assign that to a value, or I should say it's going to increment the value with the key. So right here, we're going to say that we have a set of words and then we're going to put them in a hash. So each time we come across a word that is identical. So if we have a word of uh, with V and then we come across it again, we're gonna increment it. If not, we're just going to make it one and then it, so it, they're all gonna start at zero and then they're gonna increment their way up. So now I'm simply going to return the list and let's test this out. So here I should be able to call string.wordList and if I run this, now you can see that outputs exactly what we're looking for. So right here, it went through the collection, through the array and it found the and it found it twice, so it incremented it the second time. The first time it went through, it said one, then it said two. Quick, it only found once. Brown, same thing. Fox, it found twice, and the rest all once. So this looks perfect. Now let me go through, let's clear our test data. And let me run this code. So this is gonna be 
uh, our spec or not, we're not in December anymore. We're now in January. Third, run this code. We have two examples in this exercise and with this implementation, both of them work. So great job. We have monkey patched the string class to have methods that can count accurately the total number of words and then also generate a report of all of the words and their respective counts in a string.